What's up guys, right now we're going to be taking a look at my Meritac LEPDX Reach laser flashlight. This thing is pretty sweet. I picked it up a couple months ago and you know I've been using it here and there just kind of familiarize myself with it so that I can show it to you guys and have a little bit of insight about what I'm talking about. This is my first LEP flashlight. LEP stands for Laser Excited Phosphor. I could not even begin to tell you what that means. Um, however, it does use essentially laser technology to project light in the same sort of way that a laser would. So what's important to remember about these flashlights is that you should treat it like a laser. They're uh, regulated with all the same rules um, that apply to lasers, such as don't shine them at airplanes. If you do, you get arrested. Um, this is the Rev 2. So this is the second revision uh, to this model, um, the second version put out by Meritac. And as of filming, it is out of stock. However, they are projecting to have more stock um, by end of February 2023. They've got a waiting list that you can jump on to uh, be notified of, of when they will come out with the next batch. And I'll tell you, if you want it, you better get on it quick because they sell out very quick. Um, what's different from this version and the first version, I didn't own the first version, but from what Meritac advertises, I think the main difference is the exterior uh, body um, of the flashlight. So what you get on the Revision 2 is a nice very coarse knurling um, in three different locations which I really love. It adds to the tactical um, look and feel of this light. Gives you a real nice purchase on the flashlight when in the hand. Uh, I like the styling of the light. It's a very plain um, kind of tactical looking flashlight. It's anodized aluminum body and it has a um, sapphire crystal lens to it which I thought was a pretty nice addition. Um, most flashlights aren't going to come with something of that grade or quality. If you're not familiar, Sapphire Crystal is um, kind of a, a higher end glass, well not glass, but it's a higher end crystal that's used in a lot of luxury watches and industrial applications. Uh, to, so to see it on a, a flashlight like this at the price point that this is going to come in at is pretty cool. Um, they're definitely building these uh, with hard use in mind and I believe they're primarily marketed to a law enforcement agency out west. I think that was the purpose of them coming out with this to begin with and they also just started selling them to uh, the rest of us. So I'm going to put in to this video a little bit later uh, a beam shot outside um, so I can kind of show you what this looks like. I'm going to be straight with you this is a very, in my opinion, kind of a novelty type flashlight. If you're going to use it for a tactical purpose, such as like um, some sort of weapon light configuration, or maybe a defensive um, situation, like you know possibly uh, you know law enforcement might use it in um, to kind of stun somebody with the light. Uh, and stop their advance. I mean, that makes sense to me. Um, if you're going to use it for super long distance search functions, that makes sense to me as well. But in an everyday user type of situation, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, so, for instance, what I use this light for the most is looking for my dog in the backyard. And I'll tell you, it's damned hard to find that dog with this flashlight because the beam throw is super narrow, super tight, as is the case with all, um, or at least most of these LEP flashlights. But you know that going into it, so you expect it. Um, I just thought that it might be a little bit more practical than it's turned out to be. Um, so for me, I just like the ability to know that I can shoot a beam super far if I need to. Meritac actually ad advertises this to have a... Um, visible beam throw from from the flashlight of 1.2 miles uh, so that's about 6300 feet and then the visibility from the receiving end um, they claim to be 42 miles and they also indicate that they've tested both of these and I don't disbelieve that I think that's probably accurate 
Uh, I haven't had the ability to test for myself and I think you need exactly the right testing conditions because what I ran into, um, for instance, trying to throw the beam across a valley like onto a mountain, uh, it depends on what your air is like. If there's a lot of particulate in the air, um, it's going to kind of fuzzy the image you're looking at and you're not going to really be able to tell whether or not your beam is actually hitting the target or if you're just seeing kind of the trail of the beam going through the air. So it's very dependent on the type of air and the clarity uh, or cleanliness of the air that you have in my opinion. Um, but like I said, I've got a an example of the beam throw, the best that I could do, uh, and that will come into the video a little bit later. So it doesn't come with a battery. Uh, you have to use your own battery. And the battery that they're using here is a very nice um, 21700, I believe. This is my first light with a 21700. It's a big honking lithium battery. I actually picked this up from Meritech as well. This is the one that they recommend using. Um, it's the INR 21700. And uh, these things are only about $9 on their website. So you, you can't go wrong with that. And for the amount of use that you're going to be putting in to this light, especially considering it's not going to be your, you know, your everyday carry light where you're going to be flooding your backyard or flooding the hiking trail while you're, you know, taking a hike or, or doing whatever you're going to do with a typical flashlight, this is going to last you a long time. But using this will also give you the ability to maximize the output of this light. And the output is rated at... Uh, with this battery on low 6 hours and 18 minutes, on high 2 hours and 15 minutes, and on strobe 4 hours. So that also brings us into the functionality of the light. It's a very straightforward, very simple light. As I indicated, it's a tactical flashlight designed for tactical purposes, and therefore there's not a lot of fluff in the functions, which I like. It's got low, it's got high, and it's got strobe. It has one button, and that's a tail clicky switch, and I like that. Uh, one click will get you to whatever the last mode was, either high or low. The next one will get you to the other one. So that was first it was low, then it was high, low, high, low, high, and then quick double click is strobe. And that's it. That's all it does. That's all the modes that it gives you, and that's all you really need in a flashlight like this. So as far as lumen output, now, lumen output is not going to be the real metric um, for a light like this. If you're looking for a lumen output as your typical metric for comparing the brightness um, or the strength of flashlights relative to one another, you're not going to want to do this with this flashlight because it's going to underrepresent what you're actually getting. So, for instance, on low, it's 180 lumens. On high, it's 600 lumens, and on strobe, it actually shines at 665 lumens. But like I said, that is not representative of um, the true output of this flashlight. What you have to look at is the intensity, or the candela. And this on max is a whopping 895,000 um, candela, which is just astronomical. Go and compare that to a lot of your huge multiple LED flutters, and this is going to blow that out of the water. So that's really the metric that you're going to use um, for comparing these LEP flashlights, not the lumens. It's IPX8 rated, uh, so underwater for 2 meters, which is also good. Uh, as I indicated, and you can clearly see, this is a gray anodized aluminum finish um, with some really nice knurling on the upper uh, part near the lens, the center of the body, as well as the tail cap. The tail cap is kind of cool. Let me see if I can get a good shot of this. So you've got these um, spots here that are uh, good for either glow tubes or tritium tubes. I've been looking for the, the exact size so that I can possibly find some tritium to put in there. Because uh, tritium is super expensive right now. Uh, Meritac does not provide you with the tritium tubes. Those tritium tubes would probably cost about the same as the flashlight, which by the way is $150. However, they do provide you with, um, what is it, six, 
six multicolor um, glow tubes, which are kind of cool. Uh, they do glow. Uh, obviously, nothing like tritium. They they don't function like tritium. They aren't tritium, but they do glow and they do come with a flashlight. Uh, so all I did was took a little drop of silicone, put them on the the end of the tube, and then kind of just plopped them in there. But it adds a little bit of kind of flair or design to the flashlight. Most people probably will just leave them in the little bag that it came in and never touch them. Me, I wanted to add it. Overall weight is 4.1 ounce, um, which is pretty light. I'm not sure if that's with the battery or without the battery. Getting back to the battery, obviously with the 21700, it'll be a little bit heavier than with an 18650, which by the way, this will also run on an 18650. So what they do is they provide you an adapter sleeve that takes up the rest of the body because the diameter of the 18650 is going to be a little bit different. I think the length is the same, but it's more narrow. So there's a uh, plastic tube that you put into the, the battery compartment here, and then you'll slide your 18650 in there. Um, your max output is going to be uh, 9 watts. I'm sure you're going to have a little bit less output with the 18650 versus the 21700. Um, and again, that's possible. I'm not, I'm not sure. It could just affect your uh, runtime. Um, Meritech says that the runtime on low for an 18650 is about 3 hours and 40 minutes. And again, on high, I'm sorry, with the 21700 on low, it was 6 hours and 18 minutes. So you're a little bit more than half of your runtime on an 18650. So I think the real benefit of going with the 21700 is going to be maximizing your runtime and possibly maximizing the designed output as well. Um, and again, Meritac sells some pretty good, or Countycom, which manufactures or rather markets these Meritac flashlights. I'm not sure if Meritac is a Countycom brand or not. Um, however, Countycom is where I picked up this flashlight. Countycom sells all these batteries as well. So that's pretty much an overview of this light. Again, I do really like the light. Uh, I, I think it's really unique. I, I wanted to add one of these flashlights into my collection of flashlights just because I haven't had one. And I love the ability to know that I could throw a beam super far. And what's also pretty cool is, like I said earlier, depending on, you know, the type of air that, you know, your environment is in at the time that you're using this, whether it's foggy or dusty, um, it does kind of have a pretty cool effect, like a, a laser, where you can basically see the entire beam going through the air, sort of like a big lightsaber. Uh, and for those of us that kind of like that, that's cool. I'm sure there are a lot of practical uses for these, um, probably more specialized uses than everyday uses. If you have one of these or if you have an LEP flashlight, I'd really love to hear your experience and your use case. All right, so right now let's jump into a test of this flashlight. All right, this is going to be a quick beam shot with the Meritec LEP DX Reach. This is a shed that's about 100 yards away. That was low. This is high. And it's about 5 o'clock on the East Coast. So it's pretty much dark, a little bit of residual light in the sky. But again, that's high, low, 100 yards. So this will be a longer shot. At about 300 yards, there's a doghouse right there. So that's 300 yards on high, 300 yards low. There's some trees around there about the same distance as the doghouse. And then behind there, there's a tree there, there. It's about 350 yards. Here's another shot going down a long driveway and then down a dirt access road to a county road. Uh, this driveway from where I'm standing is um, probably about 250 yards long. So we'll follow it down. This is on low. There's about 100 yards, and then where you see that reflective street sign, both of those signs, that's the end of the driveway, about 250 yards. 
And then you can see in the back there, there's a stop sign down at the county road, which is another 250 yards. There's high. So again, that third reflective sign is at about 500 yards. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the view. Uh, please drop a like and a comment below. Stay tuned for some more videos to come. I have quite a few uh, new knife videos that will be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.